Uh, Joel Went here with a, another uh, blog on uh, Second American Revolution. I want to expand a little bit about what I did, from what I did last time, in which I brought forward the idea that uh, Washington was a kind of, you know, I guess we could say psychological swampland, moral swampland, in which. Uh, there were influences that created corruption. These largely had to do with money interests. And the corruption they affected was the politician, many of whom are addicted to power. And my feeling is that this language is going to give us a more accurate representation of what we look at. When we look at the dynamics of what goes on in Washington, we see for example, in the recent health care uh, debates, a lot of argument over various ideas. But the fact is, if you really look at it, it's not these ideas that people are arguing over. They're by and large arguing over power. And uh, when you look at certain individuals and the way they act, you can see that they're much more interested in their exercise of power than they are being idealistic over one thing or another. The idealism is a kind of uh, play on words in order to set themselves up for re-election or align themselves with certain ideas that the general public holds, but by and large these people aren't idealists at all. They're more interested in exercising uh, power and uh, experiencing what that gives to them psychologically. Now, one of the things that we work with when we work with the idea of addiction is the idea of enabling. And we know, for example, and I mentioned this last time, that uh, as citizens we can enable politicians by uh, supporting their addiction and continuing to keep them in office. At the same time, I think it's useful to recognize that the biggest enablers of politicians is or the media. Uh, they fawn over politicians because the uh, media themselves are addicted to what they conceive of as access. They like being able to be able to go to parties where they're part of circles of power. They enjoy uh, being able to uh, represent to the public that they know certain inside information and they never really think about what this really means in terms of their own human nature and also what it costs the general public for them to be so attracted to this access. Um, politicians without access who actually have to, or reporters without access who actually have to discover facts and do investigative journalism and find out things tend to, uh, to be much better at presenting to us uh, the realities of what goes on in Washington. Um, in a similar vein, the, the uh, reporters that enable the politicians by uh, uh, their activities, which are not very critical at all, uh, do this uh, in a certain way. They Principally, they do this by their fascination with their own ability to tell a story. They'll talk a lot about the story, and the fact is, is when we realize what they're really talking about, they're talking about their spin on things. Politicians are, uh, have uh, what they want to get said, so they give um, reporters access, uh, and the reporters fawn over them for this access, and then repeat what they have said, except there's this problem of spin, and so the politician has to have a little bit of skill in manipulating the reporter, but the reporter has his own agenda, which is to tell a story, and his story often has very little to do with the reality of the situation either. Um, reporters get carried away uh, with uh, stories all the time. We know this when we see the kinds of things that we're uh, things that go on with celebrities become big items of news or when the, when the boy was flying around in the balloon and the press got carried away with it. Um, 
a lot of what's on the news uh, simply represents efforts by reporters to have something to say and unfortunately a lot of times when they have things that they think they have to say it amounts to nothing more than speculation <laughs> if we listen very closely for example with the recent uh, attack on a United States airliner um, for first three or four days of the news cycle concerning this event uh, what the reporters basically did was report speculation and they would find people who they claimed were experts on the situation who basically were experts on speculation and so the whole thing was framed in terms of speculation and very little uh, of the truth of anything was in there and this is one of the main things we need to appreciate when we look at, at the news that the enabling done of the addicts to power the politicians by the news people is that uh, the ultimate product of this is an absence of reason and of the truth. Uh, what we get from the news is neither the truth nor rooted in reason. And the situation has gotten to the point where uh, people celebrate the absence of reason and truth as if this was a public virtue. And we see this in such personalities as, as uh, Glenn Beck and Ann Coulter and even Keith Oberman in a certain sense because um, we all have egos and the ego has a certain vanity about its opinions and people treat their opinions as if they were eternal verities, eternal truths and you can sort of see through the speech that is made by many people with, who are talking heads on TV they don't actually have anything to say they have their speculations and their opinions and uh, they like to sort of get up there and shout them to the wood, to the rooftops. But the fact is, is they very seldom say anything that has any significant meaning. And uh, we swim as as members of the public in a kind of sea of, of uh, untruth and spun ideas and. Connections made that don't have any reason as their basis. Uh, when the press uh, talks to politicians, by and large, as part of their enabling activity, they just take as a given that the politician's opinion is what has the meaning, and they never really double-check and uh, ask the politician the kinds of questions that should be asked. The only place that, you, that we really get news which uh, sort of examines carefully um, the absence of truth and the absence of reason is actually in a show like uh, uh, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. They at least will show us what the politician said two weeks ago or three months ago in which he totally contradicts himself. Normally on the evening news when you get uh, enabling fawning by the uh, talking head who's interviewed the politicians, you don't get an examination of this fact that the politician says one thing one day and another day this, the next, nor do you get an examination by the press of their own uh, folly in this regard, where, where the way they spin the story, the way they want the story to be seen, itself should be checked. Uh, the worst actors of this, of course, are Fox News and a little bit now uh, Wall Street Journal because these uh, news outlets have become the creatures of, of a particular rich man who wants to use them for propaganda purposes. By and large, as members of the public, we not only should not believe politicians, we should not believe most of them.